Congregation may stand and sing opening hymn number 641.
The Lord be with you. Friends in Christ, today with the whole church, we enter this time of remembering Jesus' Passover from death to life, and our life in Christ is renewed. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance and for God's mercy. We are created to experience joy and communion with one another, with God, to love one another, and to live in harmony with creation. But our sinful rebellion separates us from God our neighbors, and our creation, so that we do not enjoy the life our Creator intended. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to a discipline that contends against evil and resists whatever leads us away from the love of God and neighbor. I invite you, therefore, to this dis discipline of Lent, this time of self-examination and repentance, prayer and fasting, sacrificial giving and works of love, Strengthened by the gifts of word and sacrament, let us continue our journey through these 40 days to the great three days of Jesus' death and resurrection. And now let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another and before the whole company of heaven that we have sinned by our fault, by our own fault, by our most grievous fault, in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, O God. We have shut our ears to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our past unfaithfulness, the pride, envy, hypocrisy, and apathy that have affected our lives, we confess to you. Have mercy, O oh God. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you. Our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to share the faith that is in us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our neglect of human need and suffering and our indifference to injustice and cruelty, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God our false judgments, our uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us, we confess to you. See on us. Our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us, we confess to you. Restore us, O God, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Congregation may be seated for the readings. First reading may be followed from page 93. Page 93 in the Bibles that are before you in the pew racks. I will be reading from the book of Exodus. Or Leviticus chapter 19, verses 9 through 18. When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap to the very edges of your field or gather the gleanings of your harvest. You shall not strip your vineyard bare or gather the fallen grapes of your vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and for the alien. I am the Lord your God. You shall not steal. You shall not deal falsely. You shall not lie to one another. You shall not swear falsely by my name, profaning the name of your God. I am the Lord. You shall not defraud your neighbor. You shall not steal. You shall not keep for yourselves the wages of a laborer until morning. You shall not revile the deaf or put a stumbling block before the blind. You shall fear your God. I am the Lord. You shall not render an unjust judgment. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great. With justice you shall judge your neighbor. 
You shall not go around as a slanderer among your people, and you shall not profit by the blood of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate in your heart any one of your kin. You shall not reprove your neighbor, or you will incur guilt yourself. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against any of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. The word of the Lord. If you continue turning with me in your Bibles, this time to page 991. The reading is taken from the book of First John. It will be in the fourth chapter, and I will be reading verses 7 through 21. Page 991. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in them who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So, we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. And those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears have not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen, cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord. That your steadfast love to us, O Lord, save us if you promised we will trust your word. The gospel reading may be found on page 878. The Holy Gospel according to John the 15th chapter. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. 
My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. All right, so, so turn to the person next to you and say, Happy Lent. All right, turn to the person next to you and say, Happy Valentine's Day. Okay, say, happy Lent, happy Valentine's Day. Happy Lent, happy Valentine's Day. I know it's really confusing if you've got like two different things that you have to preach on. I decided maybe we would try to combine those themes. I find that to be a challenge in preaching, so you give me two themes, I'm like, oh, what's the connection between that? So here's what I came up with. You guys ready? There are all kinds of traditions that have been passed along in the faith to us from the Catholic Church. And I'll be honest with you all, because Lent is a time of confession. I don't understand a lot of them. In fact, not only do I not understand a lot of them, I, because probably I don't understand, don't have full appreciation of them either. And one of the things that I don't really understand and don't have full appreciation of is all of that stuff about saints in the Catholic Church. You guys know what I mean? I mean, how do all those different saints get canonized, and how do they become the patron saints of what they're patron saints of? And so, um, so I decided I was going to go ahead and read through the list of canonized saints in the Catholic Church, and then just go ahead and make a bunch of stuff up. So this is what I came up with. You right? There is St. Bernard, which is apparently the patron saint of very large dogs. There is St. Louis, who is apparently the patron saint of Cardinals baseball and Budweiser beer. There is St. Cecilia, who I uh, gather is the patron saint of Hastings High Schools. St. George is the patron saint of fighting dragons. St. Jude would then be the patron saint of all Beatles songs. St. Drago is the patron saint of Russian fighters who lost to Rocky. And of course, the patron saint of beekeepers, epilepsy, and love is St. Yeah, I know that one's actually real. That's true. He actually is the patron saint. St. Valentine is the patron saint of beekeepers, epilepsy, and love. So I decided on this Valentine's Day to do a little research about who the real St. Valentine was for this sermon to see what I could find out. And this is what I found. Are you all ready? Because this is going to be important. This is what it actually states on that thing you should never doubt called Wikipedia. I mean, this is actually what's written there. All that is reliably known about the saint commemorated on February 14th is his name and that he was martyred. No, that's it. All that is reliably known about the saint, um, actually it does continue to go on. It says, um, if you continue reading, that it is uncertain whether St. Valentine is actually one person or two different people. And it even says that so little is known about him actually that in 1969 the Catholic Church removed him from the general calendar of saints in the Catholic Church. In fact, even where he's buried is a mystery. Wikipedia has told me that his remains are claimed by churches in Birmingham, England, Guard, France, Lesbos, Greece, Glasgow, Scotland, Balls on Malta, Dublin, Ireland, Madrid, Spain, Chelmno, Poland, and Savannah, and Rome, Italy. (laughs) 
so. Really, all that means that is known to us about St. Valentine is that apparently his legacy is love. The wonder of love, the joy of love, the importance of love, the beauty of love, the necessity of love, the mystery of love. But outside of that, we really know almost nothing about who St. Valentine really was. And my first thought to that was that I thought that was a little sad. But then, as I thought harder about it, it dawned on me, not, not how sad that was, but instead, if, if we were going to be beginning Lent this year, which we are, on Valentine's Day, which, just in case anybody's interested, means that Easter falls on April Fool's. That one should be fun, too. If we're going to be beginning Lent on Valentine's Day, today, Ash Wednesday, the season of the year when we actually talk about what love really is, because we talk about Jesus' passion, which I believe is love plus emotion. When we talk about his suffering, how Jesus was tried, crucified, I thought it was appropriate that we began that journey in the commemoration of somebody that all we know about him is that he was the patron saint of love. You see, St. Valentine has become a symbol of what real love, true love, honest love, genuine love, sacrificial love are all about. You know the kind of love I'm talking about. I'm talking about the kind of love that when Jesus taught his disciples a new commandment, he said, when I give you a new commandment, the new commandment is going to be this, that you love one another even as I have loved you. And no greater love hath a person than this than he lay down his life for his friends. You know the kind of love that I'm talking about, the kind of love that comes up in different places of Scripture when it starts to say things in Leviticus like there are all different kinds of ways in which you could treat people badly. But instead, these are a bunch of ways in which you can try to love your neighbor as yourself. I mean, you guys know the kind of love I'm talking about. It's the kind of love that we learn about in 1 John, where the author begins by saying that love is of God and that God is love and that everyone who loves knows God because God is love. But it ends by saying, you can't say you love God and not love the rest of his kids. It says... You can't say you love God whom you have not seen and say that you don't love his children, his, your brothers and sisters whom you have seen. That's not the way love works if it's going to be real or true or genuine. You see, I guess I'm saying that I think that St. Valentine on Ash Wednesday is actually an appropriate connection because Ash Wednesday, the beginning of Lent, The connection on love is this. Love isn't supposed to be about you. Love is supposed to be about the person that's loved. And apparently for St. Valentine, we can't make it about him because we don't even know who he is. In fact, Maybe we actually should celebrate him as a saint because if the only thing that you are ever remembered about is that you loved everybody else, maybe that's the way it's supposed to be. Or if we begin this Lenten journey on St. Valentine's Day, I guess we could talk about that real love being seen in the life of Jesus. because apparently even though we know a lot more about Jesus than we did about St. Valentine, what we do know about Jesus 
is that for Jesus, love was never about himself either. Jesus could have chosen not to go to Jerusalem. He knew what was going to happen there. He could have chosen not to have thrown the tables over of the money changers, which probably spurred everything along a little bit further. He could have chosen to leave early. He could have chosen not to celebrate the Passover there. He could have chosen not to go to the Garden of Gethsemane after Judas left to betray him, and he knew that's where he was going to be arrested. He could have chosen to have avoided Holy Week, his betrayal, his trial, his flogging, his crucifixion, his sacrifice, but it wasn't about him for him. Because true love is not about yourself, it's about the one that's loved. And for Jesus, that wasn't just about the disciples or the rest of the people that believed in him. It was awful for all of those who would believe in him all the way down to you and to me. That's what real love, true love, genuine love, sacrificial love actually meant. And I think that actually means something for you and me, and it means something that's profound. So here it is. If you are a parent, it is not about you and what other people think about you as a parent. It is about your children, period. If you are a spouse, I hope you're not keeping score in your relationship because it's not about you. It's about the other person in the relationship with you. If you are a friend, it is not about you. If you are a neighbor, it is not about you. In fact, if it's love, it's about the ones that are loved, or even better, it's about all of the ones who we have the opportunity to love because Jesus said it wasn't just about your kids and it just wasn't about your spouse. It wasn't just about your parents, your friends, or your neighbors. It went all the way down to loving your enemies and those who hate you. And that means that it's about them and not about you. So, with all due respect to Whitney Houston, I think that her song's wrong. The greatest love of all is not learning to love yourself. The greatest love of all is learning to love your neighbor as yourself. The greatest love comes from the God who is love, who chose to experience death in himself, who sent his son to experience death so that we might see the God that we hadn't seen, so that we might love our neighbors and know that they were our neighbors. The greatest love of all is following the example of a giving, loving, healing, teaching, sacrificing Jesus and following his command to love one another. That's the greatest love of all. And if we do that, then maybe on this Ash Wednesday, we could start to commemorate it by saying, this is Lent. And what do you want to give up for Lent? And here's the deal. How about if we started to give up, instead of chocolate or coffee, what if we gave up ignoring other people? What if we gave up turning away from those who, if we got involved with them, it would be uncomfortable? What if we gave up selfishness? Because I think if we did that type of thing, our legacy just might be one of love. And who knows, maybe that would mean that you and I actually were St. Valentine. Happy Lent. Happy Valentine's Day. Congregation may stand.
And now we gather our voices in prayer. Lifting our voices and turning toward God, let us pray for the church, the earth, and all who are in need. We pray for the church. Turn it toward you, loving God, and unite it in a desire to live for you alone. Hear us, O God. Sustain in us a willing spirit to care for the earth and all that lives on it, knowing that we are stewards of your creation. Hear us, O God. We pray for the nations. Let no one put an obstacle in the way of those seeking your justice, peace, and love. Hear us, O God. Let your light break forth and shine on those who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. Tonight we lift up the community in Florida where we are reminded again of our sin and our desperate need for your hope. Let your healing spring up quickly. Hear us, O God. Guide this assembly constantly back to your word, your holy meal, and the unfailing waters of baptism. Hear us, O God. We give thanks for the lives of the faithful departed who have returned to the dust and thus to you. Inspire us by your examples of holy living. Hear us, O God. Into your hands, merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your steadfast love through Christ our Lord. The congregation may be seated. At this time, we will receive our offering.
congregation may stand. Now let us pray. Merciful God, receive the sacrifice of our praise and thanksgiving and the offering of our lives, that following in the way of the cross, we may know the joy of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And now we remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Every time you eat of it, do so in the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Every time you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And now we pray the way our Father taught us. Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Return to God with all your heart to receive bread for the journey and drink for the desert. In just a moment, the ushers will show you forward for communion. We will be going as a uh, intinction, which means you will dip the bread into the cup, and you will also receive ashes before you receive communion. And at this time, those assisting with communion can come forward. The congregation may be seated.
And now let us pray. Merciful God, accompany our journey through these 40 days. Renew us in the gift of baptism that we may provide for those who are poor, pray for those in need, fast from self-indulgence, and above all, that we may find our treasure in the life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So as we begin these 40 days, we want to make sure that you are aware of the possibilities here at First St. Paul's for additional discipleship, worship, and service this Lenten season. First of all, you should have received Lenten packets in the mail, and in those packets, you would receive a fun letter from us, <laughs> or something, uh, <laughs> as well as a devotional calendar to bring you through the next 40 days, and also a Judas Purse calendar. Judas Pet pur Purse is something we've been doing here for a number of years, and each day you will have the opportunity to give thanks for your blessings, as well as place some money in the box um, to raise money for water needs around our world. So if you look to the, your right, my left, um, we are raising funds this year dear, for, with our Judas Purse for the water needs around our country. Uh, around our world. There are countless children in our world who do not have access to clean water. And as Pastor Joel and I talked about today, we give water, we change lives. The living water Jesus changes lives. And so um, our goal is 25 wells. And so we hope that you will join us on the Judas Purse journey. So oh. Pastor Andrea did the um, decorations over here. How many of you all think she did well? Well, Seth Anderson helped me. Where's Seth? <laughs> we learned how we, we only had to take it apart a couple times, right? <laughs> but um, just to, to get our minds um, focused, also I would encourage you on that Judas Purse calendar are some links so you can learn about World Vision and the work that they do around the world, not just water, but AIDS awareness, immunizations for children, hunger needs, and sponsoring children. So if you have questions about that, Jeff or I would be happy to talk about that as well, share that with you. Um, we have the grocery carts out in the fellowship gathering area, so you can bring canned goods each week, Sundays, Wednesdays, anytime you're at worship, so that we can attend to the hunger needs here in Hastings. And next week, your commentators in color play-by-play -play will be here at 7 o'clock on Wednesday. <laughs> so, um, hey, Pete and Andy, it's going to be better. It's going to be something. But if you enjoyed it last year, we guarantee that UWLI, a God's Will production, will feed and fuel you this Lenten season. Um, and so we are so glad that you are here worshiping with us. We invite you to take this journey with us. And with that, please stand for the blessing. Almighty God, Father and Son and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Our closing hymn is number 655, Son of God, Eternal Savior.
marked with the cross of Christ, go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.